When it comes to teaching the art of pleasure to a teenager, parents and schools, of course, can be a disaster. But what would I, as a father, have wanted, or indeed a mother, to say to me about sex? What did sex consist of? I remember wondering about this with my wife Josephine one time, asking her about the variety of sexual experiences that they were, and which of them she might develop a liking for. She said to me, as long as it's nice and loving. Indeed, but as La Rochefoucauld said about ghosts and about love, all talk of it, but none have seen it for certain. Her remark, Josephine's remark, had stopped me briefly. I knew that my son would learn that there were numerous varieties of sexual expression, promiscuity, prostitution, pornography, perversion, phone sex, one night stands, cruising, S&M, internet dating, sex with a wife or husband, sex with somebody else's wife or husband. There was a full menu as long as a novella, which would appeal. Freud, who was a committed monogamist, began his famous three essays on the theory of sexuality, began with his thoughts about fetishism, homosexuality, exhibitionism, sadism, bestiality, anal sex, bisexuality, masochism, voyeurism. I was reminded of a joke. Which way of being normal would you prefer? Neurotically normal, psychotically normal, or perversely normal? Perhaps my son would one day prefer to be blown by a stranger in a toilet, or perhaps he'd like to be spanked while being fellated by a Negro transvestite. The side circles of pleasure were manifold, and with an aesthetic edge too. There was smelling, hearing, tasting, and speaking. More than half of sex is speaking, apparently. Words ignite desire, and speaking is an, is an erotic art. What could be more erotic than a whisper? I might also add, though it might seem cynical to some of you here, it wasn't something I'd like to bring up with Josephine either, that loving someone or even liking them has never brought the slightest improvement to sexual pleasure. In fact, not liking the other or actively hating them could free up one's pleasure considerably, I've found. <laughs> Think of the aggression, the hatred and the violence that a good fuck involves. What then were the pleasures for my son, and who could guarantee them? Should I have been guiding the train of his desire towards the ultimate, if tyrannical, ideal destination, what Freud called, somewhat optimistically, full genital sexuality? Or should I suggest he stop off at some of the other stations and sidings first? As the great Viennese satirist Karl Krauss noted, and this was, by the way, a man's characterized by Freud as a mad half-wit. <laughs> Karl Kraus said, it's the most tragic thing in the world for a fetishist who wants only a shoe, but has to marry the whole woman. <laughs> Thank you.